Have you ever wondered why your PC gameplay doesn't feel as smooth as your console, or maybe it doesn't feel as smooth as you think it should? Well, as PC gamers, we have the option of running totally unlocked frame rates in-game. That's cool, but it's not always the smoothest solution. Today I want to talk to you about a really helpful tool I use to improve frame timing for PC games. It's called RevaTuner Statistics Server, and there's a download link in the video description. It comes bundled with MSI Afterburner, which is an invaluable performance overlay I use all the time, which you know if you've seen any of the Potato Masher videos. Pretty much everyone understands frame rate, but in case you don't know much about frame timing, here's a really basic explanation. And if you understand frame timing already and want to skip ahead to the Reva Tuner section and game results, there's a link on screen. The average monitor refreshes its picture 60 times per second. At the bottom of the screen are 12 circles representing 12 refreshes or one fifth of a second. For a game that runs at 60 FPS, there should be one rendered frame corresponding to one refresh of the screen. For 30 FPS, it's the same idea, except each rendered frame is displayed twice, as the frame rate is half the refresh rate. Pretty simple, right? So frame timing is the time between each rendered frame. For 60 FPS gaming, that's roughly 16.6 milliseconds. For 30 FPS, it's roughly 33.3 milliseconds. If you want your game to run as smooth as possible, you want the time in between each rendered frame to be exactly the same, and you want it to line up with some fraction of your monitor's refresh rate. When your frame timing is bad, some frames will be rendered earlier than they're needed, or too late, causing the last frame to be displayed more than once. Even if you're averaging 60 frames per second, not all frame rates are created equally. 60 FPS with bad frame timing will still look and feel subpar. As you can see here in this crude illustration, some frames may get displayed too often and some not at all. This is also why a game may feel less smooth with a variable frame rate around 45 or 50 than at a locked 30 FPS. Some people don't notice the stuttering that can happen when their frame rate's all over the place and it doesn't bother them, but it really bothers a lot of people. If you are someone who can easily see bad frame timing, you probably use V-Sync to lock your frame rate. I'm not going to get into all the different types of V-Sync in this video, but generally it tries to create a small buffer of a frame or more to prevent screen tearing and keep frames appearing on screen in time with your monitor's refresh rate. Still, V-Sync isn't always great for frame timing, even if it's better than an unlocked frame rate. Here is some Dirt Rally footage recorded on my PC. I'm going to use MSI Afterburner's performance meters to measure frame rate and frame timing coming off the GPU. This is not quite the same as measuring on-screen frame timing using software like FCAT, but I don't have access to that equipment, and for this video, I can use this more rudimentary method to explain the concept just as easily. So here is a roughly 5 minute section of gameplay, with the frame rate graph at the top and frame timing at the bottom. This is without VSync or using RevaTuner statistics server to manually lock the frame rate. The frame rate is high, but it varies a bit as you can see, and so does the frame timing, although it's honestly not that bad. Enabling VSync, you can see that the frame rate is now lower since it's locked to 60 FPS to match my monitor's refresh rate, and the frame timing is more consistent but it's higher overall since it's also matching the refresh rate. Still, there is a little variation and one large spike in the frame timing. Leaving VSync enabled and engaging a 60 FPS frame rate lock with RevaTuner, you can now see that the frame timing is essentially perfect, except for at the end of the race where I brought up the menu. The frame rate is as well, but for VSync gameplay, the frame rate graph sometimes rounds down a tenth of a frame, and that's why you see that tiny variation in the reported frame rate. So as you can see, RevaTuner improved our frame timing a bit, and Dirt Rally is a game that doesn't have many frame timing issues anyway. I honestly can't give you an in-depth explanation of why RevaTuner is often better than just in-game VSync, but my best understanding from what I've read is that it's manually limiting your frame rate on a driver level, rather than relying on less efficient in-game methods. Some games do a great job locking your frame rate and other games have issues. Either way, RevaTuner can help. So how do you use RevaTuner statistics server? When you install MSI Afterburner, it'll ask if you want to install RevaTuner. Say yes, let both installs finish, and then you'll have these two screens. RevaTuner has more options that I'm not covering today, but the important ones are here and here. Click the large plus sign and add the EXE for any game you want to use this tool for. On the right, you have a frame rate limit you can set. Zero is unlimited and you can set different frame rates for individual programs or just set the default global limit to be whatever you want. I recommend 60 if you have a 60 hertz monitor, but for really demanding games you might want to set them to 30 in RevaTuner. It all depends on your preferences and your hardware, and really, that's it. Just open up MSI Afterburner before you start gaming and RevaTuner will open as well. It does throw occasional errors about not being able to connect to a server, but that doesn't have anything to do with your games and it doesn't affect how we're using it here. So here are some more examples of how RevaTuner can improve your gameplay. 
GTA 5 is an open world game that streams in a lot of assets. I drove the same route in single player and it was again roughly 5 minutes long. With no V-Sync or frame rate lock, there's a good bit of variation. However, when you enable V-Sync, the frame timing overall gets better but with large spikes from time to time. You definitely notice these and they look like slight stutters. It's not game breaking, but it's very noticeable. So leaving V-Sync on and engaging a 60 FPS lock in Riva Tuner, the frame timing and frame rate still aren't perfect, but they're as good as I can get them. More importantly, the picture is V-Sync without those large spikes in frame timing. The Witcher 3 is too demanding to run at 60 FPS and 4K on my machine, so I played the game at 30. So with no frame rate lock or V-Sync, the frame timing is absolutely horrible, and this is actually the game that encouraged me to give Riva Tuner a try. I'm just running down a hill for 5 minutes, I'm not even doing anything that interesting, and it still looks this bad. It stutters and hitches constantly, and it's pretty sucky. Now this game does have in-game 30 FPS and 60 FPS locks, so I turned on V-Sync and the in-game 30 FPS lock. The frame timing is much better and the frame rate is consistent, but the frame timing still has some spikes and a little more variation than I want. So I set the in-game frame rate limiter to unlimited and set Riva Tuner to 30 FPS. The frame timing is now essentially perfect and the game plays awesome for 30 FPS. Next is Dark Souls 3. With an unlocked frame rate and no V-Sync, the frame timing is pretty bad. That large spike is a loading screen when I ride an elevator, so don't hold that against it. Now this game doesn't have a built-in frame rate limiter and my PC can't hit 60 FPS at 4K, so I tried another popular solution that many console games and some PC games use, Adaptive V-Sync. This is in the NVIDIA control panel and it functions like normal V-Sync until you can't maintain 60 FPS or whatever your refresh rate is, and then it drops to half your refresh rate. It's also sometimes referred to as double buffered V-Sync. It tries to keep Dark Souls 3 at 30 FPS and as you can see by the frame timing, it's a bit of a rough ride. The same elevator loading spike is in there, but the rest of the frame timing is also bad, and if you're going to be stuck playing a game at 30 FPS, you at least want it to be smooth. So I disabled the adaptive V-Sync in the NVIDIA control panel and went back to regular V-Sync in-game, and I used Riva Tuner to limit the frame rate to 30. Except for the two elevator rides I took, the frame timing is now essentially perfect again. It's a very noticeable difference, and it makes 30 FPS feel so much better than before. With decent motion blur, it's not bad at all, except for the increased input lag that comes with a low frame rate. Speaking of input lag, here's an example of something else cool you can use Riva Tuner for. Say I'm playing a very fast shooter like CSGO. I only have a 60Hz monitor, so I can't V-Sync faster frame rates than that, but my PC can run the game way faster than that at 1080p. Here, I turned off V-Sync and manually limited the frame rate to 180 FPS, or three times my refresh rate. Now instead of 16.6 milliseconds in between rendered frames, there's only about 5.5 milliseconds. Now I'm only seeing every third rendered frame on screen, but those frames are being delivered to the screen much sooner after they're rendered. That's a very basic description, but you get the idea. It looks pretty twitchy here, but that's just as much my mediocre CSGO skills as anything. It feels smooth when you play it, and it's much faster than traditional 60 FPS gameplay. Of course, an 144Hz or G-Sync monitor would feel even better, but if you don't have access to either of those, this is kind of a poor man's solution. So that's it, guys. I'm not sponsored by the developers of MSI Afterburner or Riva Tuner, but it's a great free product that can significantly improve your experience in some games, and it makes at least a small difference in almost every game I've tried. I use it all the time, and if you've never given it a shot, you should. Thanks for watching, have a great day.